our rights and the importance of our duties to stay within the boundaries of existing law. Abraham Lincoln was right when he said, there is no grievance that is a fit object of redress by mob law. Redress of grievances by mobs is redress by illegal means. That is anarchy, a condition that has no effective governance and no formal police, which undermines rather than protects individual rights. One reason the recent protests in the United States were shocking to so many was that the hostilities and illegalities felt among different ethnicities in other nations should not be felt in the United States. This country should be better in eliminating racism, not only against black Americans, who were most visible in the recent protests, but also against Latinos, Asians, and other groups. This nation's history of racism is not a happy one, and we must do better. The United States was founded by immigrants of different nationalities and different ethnicities. Its unifying purpose was not to establish a particular religion or to perpetuate any of the diverse cultures or tribal loyalties of the old countries. Our founding generation sought to be unified by a new constitution and laws. That is not to say that our unifying documents or the then current understanding of their meanings were perfect. The history of the first two centuries of the United States showed the need for many refinements, such as voting rights for women and, particularly, the abolition of slavery, including laws to assure that those who had been enslaved would have all the conditions of freedom. Two Yale University scholars recently reminded us, quote, for all its flaws, the United States is uniquely equipped to unite a diverse and divided society. If citizens don't have to choose between a national identity and multiculturalism, Americans can have both. But the key is constitutional patriotism. We have to remind you remain united by and through the Constitution, regardless of our ideological disagreements." End of quote. Many years ago, a British Foreign Secretary gave this great counsel in a debate in the House of Commons. Quote, We have no eternal allies, and we have no perpetual enemies. Our interests are eternal and perpetual, and these interests it is our duty to follow." End of quote. That is a good secular reason for following eternal and perpetual interests in political matters. In addition, the doctrine of the Lord's Church teaches us another eternal interest to guide us. The teachings of our Savior, who inspired the Constitution of the United States and the basic laws of many of our countries. Loyalty to established law instead of temporary allies is the best way to love our adversaries and our enemies as we seek unity in diversity. Knowing that we are all children of God gives us a divine vision of the worth of all others and the will and ability to rise above prejudice and racism. As I have lived for many years in different places in this nation, the Lord has taught me that it is possible to obey and seek to improve our nation's laws and also to love our adversaries and our enemies. While not easy, it is possible with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave this command to love and he promises his help as we seek to obey it. I testify that we are loved and will be helped by our Heavenly Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.